Ugh. There we go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, perfect. So welcome to those online. Uh, so, the joy of hybrid events. Um, as you'd know, we've got plenty of people in the room here, but we've also got, I think, about 20 or 30 online as well. So what I want to start with, one of the people we have online is actually our Dean of Education, so Professor Chris Natalia. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just switch over to her online just to do a bit of a welcome to you all. So I'm hoping... Folks, can you see or hear me? We could hear you then for a minute, Chris. Okay, cool. So you can hear me? Can you see my beautiful face? Okay, I'm so sorry, folks. I'm out of my office and my um, camera seems to have broken down, but I can assure you you're not missing very much. So everyone, Nina Mani. Um, this means hello in Ghana language, and that's the traditional language um, of the custodians of the land on which you're going to be learning um, in the next couple of years. And I want to say welcome to the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. So our aim is to work with you to find out the things you care about, the things that interest and excite you. And we want to help you understand your world in new ways and change it for the better. Now, folks, you've landed in a really diverse college. We've got about 20 disciplines and um, it's ranked um, by the Good Universities Guide in 2022 as number one in South Australia in um, undergraduate creative arts for full-time employment, for student support and teaching quality. Number one in South Australia in undergraduate humanities, culture and social sciences for full-time employment, um, overall education experience and skills development. Number one in South Australia undergraduate communications for overall education experience, student support and teaching quality. Number one in South Australia, undergraduate tourism, hospitality, sport and leisure for full-time employment, learning resources and overall educational experience. Now, folks, I share these um, numbers with you um, because we're quite proud of these achievements. They tell us we're doing a good job of supporting the people who matter most in Flinders and the people who matter most are our students. The people who matter most are you. But I want to tell you that um, just as we're proud of the achievements of our educators, there are things that we do and that we want to share with you that aren't so easily captured in the rankings. And these are the knowledges, the experiences, the texture of understanding the world um, that we engage with as researchers and practitioners, as teachers who are committed to sharing our expertise to inspire and enrich your learning. So within those 20 disciplines, we've got people who are creating performances with theatre groups around the state. We've got people running their own production businesses. We have lecturers writing best-selling and prize-winning novels and short stories. We have lecturers who are partnering with schools to figure out how to teach young people about gender, sex and safety. We've had um, lecturers who have changed abortion laws in South Australia, who are exploring how people manage in the gig economy, who are tracking the impacts of climate change on everyday lives, who are shaping public debates about fascism and Nazism and the war in Ukraine, who are writing about vampire Jane Austen, who are thinking about what films and what books matter in Australia, who are keeping diverse languages alive in South Australia who are working with the UN on what wellbeing means and how to measure it, who are writing about what it means to live a good life, how to be ethical, how to be happy, who are figuring out how to create festivals and events that reflect what matters in a community, who are rediscovering ancient underwater archeological sites off the West Australian coast, 
who are working with traditional owners of country to trace change and continuity in its use. Now, folks, I share this with you because I want you to know and I want you to take advantage and revel in all the expertise um, and passion that you have available to you as students in this college. But I also want to share with you that all of this expertise and passion doesn't come easily and has been built through hard work and through missteps and getting things wrong, learning what we don't know and asking, asking, asking when we don't know. Now, folks, I've not worked with a single person here who has not at some stage royally screwed something up. So I failed a topic in my first semester of university and I failed a topic in my last semester of law before I switched to a Bachelor of Arts because it was what I wanted to do, even if it didn't seem like a sensible choice. I spent the first five years of my university life confused about where the books were in the library and just too scared to ask, which is to say that learning is fun and exciting and sometimes it's uncomfortable. And learning at university, which can be a strange place, is fun and exciting and sometimes hard. Learning means starting with not knowing much about the topic and about university life and working to understand more. And there's no shame in not understanding or in needing advice or guidance. It's part of the process of learning. It's part of life. It's what we all do, academics as well as students. And we are here to support you to have a meaningful, useful and engaging time in your studies. So folks, we want to support you to figure out what matters to you and where you want to end up after your degree and in your life. Do you want to be an entrepreneur or a creative practitioner? Do you want to work in government or community organisations? Do you want to work as an advocate or employed in the private sphere or making policy? We'll help you figure that out. We'll help you get there and we'll help you and encourage you to ask questions along the way. So welcome to our community. Welcome to the community of humanities, arts and social sciences. Enjoy your successes. Enjoy the opportunities available. Embrace your confusions as we all do and ask for advice or help when you need it. And folks, have a fine old time. You'll see me around the place and um, you are almost always most welcome to drop me an email or come and say hello. And I really look forward to seeing you and meeting with you. See you later. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> so unfortunately we couldn't see you. Um, I'm so sorry you couldn't see me, but also just know, folks, that I'm on leave and so I'm not looking my finest, but I'll make sure that Eliza posts a gorgeous picture of me so that I look my very best and you'll feel confident and safe in the new college. But at the moment, I do look a bit rough. <laughs> we'll print out a massive photo and put it out in the courtyard. With a beautiful filter, a soft filter. <laughs> okay, thanks, Chris. Um, so hopefully, even though we couldn't see Chris, you appreciated um, those lovely words um, from Chris. And we do acknowledge that this is kind of a new journey for everyone. Um, so you've heard a little bit about us and our college. So we'd like to hear a little bit about you guys as well, because it's always nice to sort of think about who's it, who we've got in the room. Um, so we're going to do this with a good old fashioned hands up. <laughs> um, for those online, you can add in the chat box which one is kind of best represents you. Um, but for those in the room, who's joining us straight from secondary school? Hands up. Okay, quite a large number. How about joining us from TAFE? Okay, a few around the room, dotted around the room. How about transferred from a different degree? Okay, some of you have realised that HASS is better. Yeah, that's good. Um, how about those of you who've been out in the workforce? Yeah, so a decent amount as well. Now I do have their other, anyone, something else? Anyone like to shout what that other is? Ah, yeah. nice. Different way of doing it. I like it. I like the approach. Yes. Yeah. Um, ah, going into honours. Perfect. Nice. So there's lots of different pathways, and we do really like to acknowledge that everyone is coming from a di different space, has a different background, a different story. So we're not all approaching this 
for the same reasons or from the same pathways. Um, but we do like to acknowledge that this transition into university still can be daunting. There are still new things we have to learn, new ways of being. And I think Chris kind of especially talked about this really nicely in the fact that we don't expect you to get everything right to begin with. Part of learning is, you know, learning from your mistakes, um, not necessarily doing things perfectly from the beginning, but sort of working on your skills as you go through your degree. It's a learning experience, so that's kind of part of it. So we are here to kind of help you and support you on the journey. And I find it's best just to kind of do your own thing. It's your own race. Don't compare yourself to others. I think I fell into that trap when I was doing university, would look at my others going, oh, they're so confident. They know what they're doing. And really everyone underneath, I think, feels the same. Um, we're just good at hiding it. <laughs> so just kind of know that we are here to help you. We are, you know, a community um, here in the college that you can ask questions to and yeah, basically know that you don't have to get it all right at the beginning. It is just the very start of your journey. So it is this really good place where you can explore. So you, university gives you that opportunity to expand upon your horizons, discover what really interests you. So some of you may know exactly what you want to do in the future. Others may just be here to explore and really find out what your passions are. So that's the, the good thing about the whole range of different topics and classes we have here at university. You can go see what interests you and then that, help that, that helps you guide your future pathways and your future journey. So it's finding your passions, but also making connections. So at the end of the session today, I'll talk a little bit about some of our associations and clubs um, because it's more than just going to classes and learning stuff. It's about the whole university experience and being a part of, of this community. So there are a whole range of different experiences, interactions that occur within the university space. So it is a bit different from secondary school. So there were quite a few people in the room coming from secondary school. So we have things like lectures, like we've got here with everyone all in the same room. And then we also have things like seminars where you're in smaller groups, where it's much more discussion based. We generally tend to prefer the face to face option. So it's nice having people in the same room, although there are also online classes. So do get used to that as well. So make sure when you're looking at your timetable, you know where your classes are, whether they're physically here on campus, whether they're online um, and all those sorts of things. But know that you're not alone in this journey. I think it really gets emphasised, especially at secondary school. I had so many people telling me, oh, university is for independent study. And yes, it is to a certain extent. You've got to motivate yourself. You've got to get yourself to class and all those sorts of things. But you still have lots of support. So you're not completely by yourself. So we have lots of lovely professional staff in our college and across the university. You have your academic staff who will be taking you for lectures and seminars. We also have lots of support services. So you'll hear a little bit more about our support services in your degree sessions today. But also you have your peers as well. There's lots of things you can learn from one another as well. So it's not just about the lecturers telling you stuff, it's about trying to integrate with one another and learn from each other. So just to highlight some of our really helpful and lovely professional staff members, we've got three of them in the front row here. Um, they will be popping into the degree sessions as well, um, mainly to make sure you've got your enrolments all good. Um, but yeah, so they will be kind of popping around today. So do say hello to them. They're very accessible. We've got contact details here. The best way I would say to make any inquiry, especially if you're not sure where the inquiry needs to be directed, is to make an Ask Flinders request. So that's probably your go-to place. If you don't know who you want to ask the question to, that will make sure it goes to the right place as well. Okay, so I mentioned before about online learning. So we do have a couple of different online platforms that are being used this year. So do make sure you know which one your topics are on. So we have what we call Flow, 
Flinders Learning Online, and then we also have Canvas. So we're slowly transitioning onto Canvas. So next year, I imagine all of your topics will be on Canvas, but just be mindful that there are the two um, different options at this point, but you can find the entry point to both off of Flinders Opta page. So that's kind of your main home page for Flinders. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have a little interaction. So I'm going to encourage you guys to get your phones out. We sometimes ask you to do this in class. Oh, do you want me to share again? Sorry, one second. If I stop sharing and then share again, maybe it's because I went in and out. Is that better? Can you go back to the slide and then you went back to the slide? Yeah. I'll do it for it. How's that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you can scan the code there. Make sure you do pop in your full name. I'm giving you a moment all to set up and then I will reveal the question. There is a bag of prizes for the, the winner. It's a tangible prize. For those of you at the back, if you want to sort of shuffle in, there are still a few seats in the front here. <laughs> There's, I can count them one, two, three, four, five, just around here if you want to shuffle forwards. Okay. Has everyone had the chance to? Log in? Not yet? I'll give it a minute more. As much as I said it wasn't a competition before, this part of it is. <laughs> okay, you can help me try. Okay, are we ready? I'm getting some nods. Okay, yes, question? Oh yeah, it was a thumbs up? Okay, that's good, I love thumbs up. Um, okay, if we're ready, I will reveal the question. And it's, yeah, basically the first one to answer and get it right. First correct answer, not just the first answer, first correct answer wins the prize. So there we are. How many disciplines are there in the College of Hass? Thanks. Straight on. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's like, boom, 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 boom. I think you have to scroll down to the bottom here. Pop it on there. I think so. I reckon it's they're all going up. Yeah. So, wow. I mean, it's bad. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, the results are in. The first correct answer with the answer of 20 was Casey Hogben. Where's Casey? Hey. Well, come and deliver your prize right now. There you go. Nice and good. Right. 
Okay, there we go. We tried to make sure we dropped it in there a few times. <laughs> so 20 disciplines, so we're quite varied. Okay, so after that excitement, we're gonna cover some essential things. Um, so these are just sort of basic things that we need to know when we're starting at university. So of course, one of the most important things, Wi-Fi. Everyone wants to know it. Um, I have got this printed out in the courtyard as well, so don't panic about getting all these details right now. Um, obviously, we do have our own sort of Wi-Fi system at on campus, which is called EduRoam. So this will automatically, once you've logged in the first time, log you in every time you're here on campus, and it means you're not using your own data, which is good. Because um, I know I like to use lots of interactive moments in my lectures, and I think a lot of other staff members do as well. So it is handy having access to the Wi-Fi system. <coughs> Another really key thing to do is get your student ID card. Who's done it already? Okay, quite a few. That's good, it's good to know. Um, so you can get this online, so you can request it online, or you can simply pop down to Flinders Connect. So just off the plaza there as well. So do make sure you get that, because you need your ID card for getting after hours access to buildings, to do your printing and lots of other things. There is also, I'm not sure if you've discovered this page, a page called Compass. And this Compass site has a new student section that does give you lots of step-by-step -step kind of instructions. So things like how to enroll, things like student ID cards as well. So that's a really good um, and helpful site um, to go to. And who's enrolled? Okay, I'd like to see that. It's majority of people, which is good. Um, so for those of you who haven't enrolled, there are a few steps. So again, you can sort of go back to Compass to kind of revisit this if you like, but make sure you are enrolled in topics. And then for some topics, there may be multiple different seminars. So make sure you're registered in, in a specific seminar as well. So that's the second step over there. Another new thing that's come into action this year is the unique student identifier. So this is new for everyone. So it's not just new for you, but all the other students in other year levels as well. So you do need to make sure that you have a USI, we're calling it. Um, so if you're not sure whether you have one, do go to that site. Um, if you don't have one, then there is the site at the bottom there. So make sure you have that because that is something that you need to make sure you get um, funding all the way through university. Now transport, you may notice this morning that it's free parking this week, O week. That ends next week, unfortunately. Um, so you do need to make sure that you have a parking permit. So make sure you know where to go for that. So you can do that from the machines that are out by the car parts, or you can sign up for like semester long permit parking as well. If you want to use public transport, there's lots of buses that come onto campus. There's also the new train station down um, by the medical center. And I know that still seems like a bit of a trek to get up here and it's uphill, but there is a loop bus that goes from the train station and takes you up here as well and can go around all of the different um, locations, even off to Tonsley and things like that, which is free. So there's lots of different uh, mechanisms you can use here. So you don't have to drive if you don't want to. There's other ways you can come onto campus as well. One thing I would suggest you follow is um, the Finding Your Way at Flinders flow site. So this is a site that has been set up for all university students and it does give you some really good kind of introductory information. So I would suggest you check that out. Also through the student experience team at the university, they've developed this Unify program, which is meant to be a nice way of kind of easing you into university life. Um, it helps you connect and meet with peers and they have some sessions on this week and this next week as well. So you can join those sessions. It's a nice way to kind of meet people um, and get to know the university a little bit more too. So in terms of communications, you'll probably get lots of communications from your lecturers. 
um, looking at the floor or canvas pages, but there's also lots of communications broadly from the university. So we have a newsletter called Ping. It's an e-newsletter, so you can sign up to that. Um, and there's also social media that you can follow as well. So Hey Flinders, just remember that. Hey Flinders, so you can look that up on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So as well as the university-wide communication paths, we've also set up a College of Hass flow site. So this is a place where we're gonna put some updates for our college. So things like events that are coming up, um, information about specific topics, you know, things you can study, information about who your student reps are gonna be as well. So that's also another site um, that would be useful. Most of you will probably be enrolled in this already. So if you look on flow, hopefully it will appear on there. Otherwise, we will follow up with further instructions in your topics next week as well to make sure you do have this. So I mentioned right at the start, we do have a number of Hass related associations or clubs. So this is our, our list right here. So we've got quite a few um, clubs, varied interests across our college. You will see some of these clubs represented out in the courtyard today. So I've tried to pull some of these together that you can come and talk to. Um, and we're also joined by our Flinders University Arts Student Association today as well. So in fact, I am going to introduce you to one of their members, Olivia, who is going to MC the final section of today's session, which is introducing our alumni and really trying to illustrate where your degree can take you. Okay. Oh, bit you. Hello. I didn't realise there were so many people today. So <laughs> if my voice shakes, I apologise. So I am the secretary of the Art Students Association. Um, we are a student led group for art students like yourselves. Um, and we're designed to enhance your experience at university. So we offer a range of social and educational events throughout the semester. And um, most importantly, we provide a space for you to meet new people and to make new friends. So if you wanna find out more or you would like to um, become a member, you can come see us at our stall um, just outside in the humanities courtyard. And we do have a very limited number of um, succulents for new members, so she's getting quick. So I'd like to introduce um, our first alumni speaker, Sarah Hample. Um, Sarah Hample has a Flinders Bachelor of Arts um, majoring in psychology and sociology. She founded Authentic Results Coaching following a 25 year career in human resources and leadership roles. Her successful track record includes working with high profile blue chip Fortune 500 companies and smaller not for profit organisations across Australia, the United States, Canada, and Asia. She has led large teams and worked with thousands of leaders and managers across diverse business functions, industries, and international geographies. Utilising her degree in psychology and sociology, backed by the latest in neuroscience and human behavior based methodologies, Sarah brings a unique proven perspective to help leaders accelerate their development, boost their confidence and amplify their impact. Sarah is also a mentor to Flinders business and creative arts students. Hi everybody, great to see you. Um, this is really weird standing this side of the podium because I was exactly where you are 33 years ago. So gee, time goes fast. Um, and I really wanna talk to you today and share with you a world of opportunity that I have found that started with my degree. And bear with me as I try and get through these slides. Awesome. Okay, so the world of opportunity that I found university gave me and my degree was firstly a learning opportunity because I always had quite a curiosity to understand why do people do what they do? Why do people think differently, behave differently, get different outcomes? Why are we all so vastly different? 
And so I decided to come to university. And for my family, that was pretty big because I was the first one to go to university on either side of my, my family. Anybody else here like a first year or first in their family to come to university? Awesome. So you know exactly what that's like, right? It's pretty important, pretty proud moment. And by enrolling in a Bachelor of Arts degree and majoring in psychology and sociology, I got to understand a lot more about what really drives human behaviour, what drives ultimately people's success and their path in life. Psychology really helped me to understand a lot more about how people think, what they believe, how they behave and how they act that creates their success. And sociology helped me to determine a little bit more about how our social interactions and our communities influence a lot of our decisions and a lot of our actions and behaviours and beliefs, but also how we can influence others outside of us. And while I was at university, I also stayed at a residential college in North Adelaide. So I had about 200 test subjects that I could kind of observe and think about all the things I was learning to see how did that sort of play out in human behaviour. Plus, I shared a lot of my interesting learnings with them. But my opportunity at university also led to an incredible career opportunity, or I should say wide and broad and diverse career opportunities. I started in human resources and I've had a 20 year career in human resources um, throughout different parts of it. So human resources in any organization is responsible. So I'm sure many of you are aware for the recruitment, for the development, for um, continued and upgrading, wanting to get the best out of people, engage them. How do we create the right culture in the organization? How do we get people to deliver and to develop and to continue to drive success within the organization? And my, my career within human resources spanned over 20 years across Australia, New Zealand, uh, US, Canada and Asia, and for some pretty well-known brands. I'm pretty sure there's some iconic brands that, that you would know. I started out with Lion, I worked for companies like Cadbury Schweppes, for Dr Pepper. And throughout that experience in all those different companies and countries, I really got to understand more about how do we motivate? How do we develop? How do we get the best out of people? How do we tap into their potential? And one particular program I remember running when I was in the US was designing and developing a uh, employee recognition program. Um, really identifying what types of behaviours can people demonstrate that reflect the company values and reflect what the company wants to be known for. And that particular initiative that I was leading was able to be uh, utilised across an employee base of 20,000 people in North America. And within the first month, one employee, just one employee came up with one idea that saved the organisation $1 million per month. So it's just the power of really tapping into people's potential, their thoughts, their beliefs, and really bringing things to life. And I worked across a variety of business contexts. I worked for companies that were joint ventures, that were going through massive growth, that were going through downsizing, that were uh, going through a major merger or acquisition and even demerger. From there, when I returned to Australia and actually came back to South Australia, I had an incredible opportunity for a career change to move into marketing, fundraising and alumni relations. And at the time, my manager actually said to me, Sarah, I'm not employing you because you don't have the marketing skills and the alumni relations experience and the fundraising experience. What I'm employing you for is your vast experience and knowledge, your networks, your connections, for your decision making, your influencing ability your communication skills, for your relationship building. I want you to bring all of that into this organisation because you can learn the marketing skills. That's fine. I want to really build on and leverage other experiences and skills and knowledge that you have. And that opportunity really helped me to tap into a lot of my background in psychology and sociology because what really helps people to be inspired to want to do different things. This role was actually at the University Residential College that I attended when I was back at university. So through my networks, I was able to get that opportunity. And I was therefore able to really link into what is it that inspires people to wanna to join a particular collegiate community like that? What inspires people to wanna to donate money to a cause that perhaps they know something about or don't know anything about? And what inspires people to want to, at the age of 95 and 96 years old, to want to come back and give back to that foundational institution that they attended when they were at university. And I did have one gentleman like that who was at 96 years of age, wanted to come back 
to meet the students, to share his experience and wisdom. And there were so many more alumni just like him who was able to do that. From there, a couple of years ago, I decided that I wanted to take my learnings, my experience and my knowledge and my passion for personal development and create my own organisation to become an entrepreneur, to become a business owner. And it was a lot different than what I thought it would be, I can tell you that. But I love it every day because I get to work with new and emerging leaders to really help them accelerate their development, to increase their influence and to boost their confidence so they can have incredible impact. And not only am I doing that in my own business, but I do get to mentor Huss students here at Flinders University and MBA students to not only learn from them and understand what's going on in their lives and what different paths do they want to take, but also to share my experiences and my learnings further. So it's been a phenomenal opportunity to leverage my foundation in my degree throughout every aspect of my career in different ways and to keep building and learning on that through different experiences. Because I know when I was at university, I kept thinking, how the hell am I going to use this when I get out into the real world? Is this stuff that's actually feasible? Is it usable? And every single part of it has been and more. So I really look at this opportunity that you all have, regardless of your background, of your experience, of your age, of your demographic, I think this is just an incredible world of opportunity that you have of lifelong learning, because we always have the opportunity to learn more, to grow wiser, to get wisdom from our own experiences and from other people. And one thing I know about life is it is constantly changing. And change can be a choice too, if you want to instigate it and grow it and really go with it and really lean into change and identify what the benefits can be. And one thing that was mentioned earlier too is really leveraging your networks, building strong relationships. So starting here at university and you would have started elsewhere from wherever you've come from, whether it was school, from other work experiences and so forth, but keep leveraging and nurturing those opportunities because a lot of my work opportunities came through those networks. When I came back from the US, I had one of my previous HR directors who helped me to find another job who actually put me forward for a job I didn't even know about, which was exciting. When I moved into my marketing role, that was through somebody who knew of me in my network. And then starting my own business, it's about leveraging those networks and contacts I have to find clients. So really build and nurture them because no one can do it alone. And while you're here at university, really leverage all those support services as well. And this is a true opportunity where you do have the world in your hands. You know, I love to look at the world through a lens of opportunity because it is endless and it's limitless. So I truly invite you to be really fearless and be really courageous and just enjoy this opportunity. Make the most of it because you now have the chance to be who you want to be, do what you want to do and create the change, make a difference and really make an impact. So thank you. And I truly wish you every future success. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm now going to introduce Anthony Robinson. Um, Anthony is a 2D character concept and storyboard artist working in the film industry and is also an indie game developer. He was a freelance storyboard artist for the Warner Brothers feature film Mortal Kombat, Stan's feature film Gold and the Stan TV series The Tourist, in addition to various other freelance contracts. The storyboards he creates are used as a guide to support each movie's visual effects, prosthetic makeup and art departments. In 2020, he co-founded Golden Age Studios and is currently the creative director. Golden Age Studios' aim is to create opportunities and jobs within South Australia's burgeoning creative industry sector and to generate homegrown original intellectual property. Anthony has been identified as a top talent in the international The Rookies and was a finalist in the annual Rookie Awards in 2020 for Game of the Year console and PC for Tinker and Spell Seekers of the Lost World and won a Rookie's Excellence Award for his animation, The Soulless Major. In 2022, Anthony received a Flinders Early Career Alumni Award and was named as one of In Daily's 40 Under 40. Please make Anthony welcome. Hello, everybody. Lots of uh, eager new students coming in. It's great to see so many different, um, uh, I guess, disciplines under the same banner 
of Haas. Uh, I'm an artist, so you know a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to be based around that. But I think a lot of the um, the foundations of of that will work across the, the whole board essentially. So yeah, I'd say like the best thing about coming into uni is that you are coming in and you're starting with something that you've got somewhat of a passion for. And that passion only grows as you progress throughout your studies. So as you're, as you're starting, you might not be the best at what you're doing. You might not be able to have the skills that are uh, quite there to get your ideas out of your head and make them tangible on a piece of paper or in an action or uh, an essay, but those skills grow. So as you fail, you will get better each and every time. The only thing that's important is that you need to pick yourself back up, dust yourself off and give it another crack. Um, and I think that comes across every single discipline, whether you're an electrician or an artist or a coach. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. Another thing to kind of take into uh, consideration is the people that you're studying with, you're gonna be getting to know them pretty damn well. Um, they're gonna be your friends. They're gonna be your colleagues. You're gonna be partners. You know, These are gonna be the people that will probably refer you to a job or that you refer them to a job. So it's really important to not make rivals, but to to work together and, and you know, criticism can be a really powerful thing if it's done with respect and with, um, and with the right intent. So I'd say as you're moving forward, it's okay to criticize people and their work, but you do it in a way that's not gonna make, gonna lift them up. Because if you lift them up to that next step, they might take a few more steps above you and they can lift you up. So it's all about growing that community, working together and continuing to progress throughout your career. Um, as for art, there's no roof on it. And I think that, again, that's probably the same across a lot of other disciplines. So yeah, like just keep going. There's, you can only ever get better at anything that you do. So if you're great at anything, someone will pay you to do it. Um, <laughs> that's kind of like how I kind of run about things. But yeah, um, I mean, that's all I've got really to say is just do your best. You're here for a reason. And it's easy to forget why you're studying that you are paying for this. So, you know, you owe it to yourself. This is a, you are investing in your education that will see you through to the rest of your life. Thanks. I'd like to introduce Rebecca Uphill. Rebecca has a Bachelor of International Tourism, a graduate diploma in tourism and a master of tourism. She has worked in the tourism industry for 10 years in various roles, including visitor servicing, tour guiding, social media and marketing and project management. She's passionate about business development and advocacy and currently works at the Tourism Council SA as the industry programs coordinator. Please welcome Rebecca. Hello, um, it's weird that 10 years ago, I was at my own O week listening to speakers. I can't remember who they were, so it's okay if you don't remember me in 10 years time. Um, so yeah, I work at the Tourism Industry Council of South Australia. We look after business development within the industry as well as advocacy in the political sphere. Um, when I came out of high school, um, reflecting upon the different careers I had considered. Um, there was a very clear cut way of getting to where I wanted to be. I wanted to be a vet at some point, a teacher, um, a speech pathologist, and it was all very clear that I had to study and I would become what I wanted to be at the end of it. Um, tourism and many other disciplines within Haas, that's not the case. That's awesome. The diversity is incredible it's also very scary i can attest to that um not, not the unknown is very scary but also as we've discussed there's so much opportunity um, and the world is your oyster so um, in terms of my own personal journey um, I, I studied after i studied my undergrad i still didn't know what i want to be when i grow up and i still don't know to this day um, so I decided to do postgrad because I was really enjoying, particularly in the third year topic, some of the, the social aspects of, of tourism, including sustainability um, and ethical tourism. So after learning some of the, the basics in first and second year, I really started to find my passion and particularly in research as well. So that um, postgrad 
pathway really had a calling to me and it was again something that I wanted to do for myself to, to spend time researching and, and continuing writing and, and learning. Um, after uni, you know, and while I was studying as well, a lot of people, particularly relatives and friends would go, oh, I didn't know you had to, to study tourism to, to become a, a travel agent. And it's like, there's so much more to tourism than travel agents and tour guides and nothing against those professions as well. But there's a whole world out there of professions you probably haven't even heard of yourselves as well in tourism and lots of, you know, interchangeable professions. I mean, for our team at TKSA, we've got less than 10 people. Um, majority of us have all come from a tourism um, background in terms of our studies. We've got a communications coordinator, industry programs coordinator. We've got an events manager and a membership coordinator as well. And plus our CEO was one of the first people to, to go through the tourism degree here at Flinders. Um, and one of, I guess, the key learnings that we all discuss um, quite often is, yeah, those, those connections within, within uni, um, our CEO, mentioned how he really struggled with his readings um, and it just wasn't sticking in his brain what he was reading. So what he did was he would catch up with, with his um, friends at uni and discuss readings and he learnt his best way of learning. And that's one of the key points that you'll get out of your studies as well as obviously you're gonna learn so much, your brain can only absorb so much but you're going to learn a lot about yourself. There's lots of personal development involved with uni. You're going to learn your best learning styles. There's skills that you're not going to like, um, but are going to be really useful in your careers. Your career is really an extension of your studies and you never stop learning. We've talked about failure today. I like to think of not failure, but not yet. If you haven't got it yet, you will down the track. So. There's so much to learn at uni, not just the coursework, but those, those skills like working in a group, being able to present in front of a group, research, critical thinking. These are all the things that you're going to really nurture during your time here at uni. So um, it's a huge step. Well done for actually getting here and enrolling. Um, like I said, there's so many opportunities within tourism and particularly for people who aren't even studying tourism. Um, you might find yourselves um, in this industry as well. Um, I don't think I've had in my 10 years so far a day where I've, I'm absolutely bored at work. Um, I've enjoyed every single day of working because I've really identified what I like to do, what I'm passionate about um, and what I'm not good at um, and how to nurture those different parts of my skill set. So it's really important that you, you leverage that time at uni to, to know yourself um, and to find out the skills and the passions and the values that you have that will align with your work because you don't want to be stuck in a job um, that you don't enjoy. So I really encourage you to think of those things that you're really passionate about. Um, tourism is a really important part of um, wellness in terms of I'm sure most of us in this room have had some sort of privilege of being able to travel so um, tourism is a really important part of everyone's lives um, and it's often kind of misconstrued in terms of the idea that you know there's not many places to go within tourism in terms of a career but there's so many places to go um, and I think yeah, like we said, the world is your oyster. Have fun at uni. Um, don't take yourselves too seriously. Um, it's all a big learning curve. And yeah, not failure, but not yet is a really important in a mindset to have. And also take your time. The best part about um, our degree in particular was the, the flexibility in terms of um, your, your topics, but as well as, as the time. If you find an opportunity like an internship um, from your, your placement, um, or a job from the connections that you have, take it um, and continue studying as you go. But you know those skills that you get through um, opportunities from your your networks and um, your placement is really important as well. So I really encourage you to do what suits you best, and that's that's what you can get out of uni. So thank you very much. We are TKSA's um, got a membership for students as well. So if you are in the tourism degree, really encourage you to to connect with us. We're already in the industry um, and we're always you know really we're a people industry we love to support young people moving into tourism careers so always i'm um, just 
connect with me on LinkedIn if you have a LinkedIn page already. Um, and yeah, just reach out if you need any support. We really encourage that. So thank you very much. Uh, finally, I'd like to welcome Ashley Thomas. Uh, she has a Bachelor of Business Marketing International Business, a Bachelor of Languages in Spanish and Applied Linguistics, and a Master's Degree in Languages specialising in Spanish and Applied Linguistics, all from Flinders. In 2021, she commenced working at Migration Solutions and is now a registered migration agent working in the corporate and family visa teams at Migration Solutions. She also has a graduate diploma in migration law. Working directly with clients, she supports them to achieve their immigration goals, mostly working within the family-based and employer-sponsored visa categories. These visas generally include partner, temporary work, sports, distinguished talent, and citizenship applications. Ashley has traveled to more than 70 countries worldwide, including living in Spain and Latin America. Please welcome Ashley. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Fresh faces here. Um, as you can see, I've studied quite a lot at Flinders. Um, and I think what I really wanted to just touch on today, and I'll, I'll try and keep it short, um, is I guess more than what a career you can get out of a degree is more, I guess, from personal growth and development. Um, I came straight from high school to university um, and really didn't know what I wanted to do. I enrolled in a Bachelor of Business, um, did not love it, but I finished it. Um, and that really sort of pushed me in my early 20s to get out of my comfort zone and to travel. So I took the next couple of years traveling around, heading to over 70 different countries and just discovering what I like and what I don't like and what I really wanted to pursue from a personal side of things. Um, that did lead me to backpacking through South America for six months, which was an incredible experience. I encourage everyone, if they can, um, you know, between your studies, semesters, um, holidays, to go out there and travel and to explore new things. It's It will never not be a fantastic experience. Um, that did lead me to wanting to pursue um, Spanish from a personal perspective. I came to uni in uh, 2015 enrolling into the Bachelor of Languages in Spanish and Applied Linguistics, not with a set career goal in mind. Um, and it took me a fair few years to figure out where I wanted to be uh, with lots of ups and downs throughout the process. But I count my time at Flinders as an absolutely incredible experience. Um, the, the support that you get from the academic staff here, um, plus the opportunities that you have to make you know friends, lifelong friends, people I still keep in contact with, um, personal growth as well, you know, all the different topics that you can enroll into. It's, it is just a really fantastic experience. Um, I loved it so much that I continued on and did my master's in language studies um, and wrote my full 100 page, 100 page thesis in Spanish, which was an incredible challenge. Um, but I absolutely love it. So what I kind of really wanted to just emphasize, I guess, is for me personally, I am in a career today that I absolutely fantastically love. Um, migration as well is a very key topic at the moment. Um, following COVID, you know, that there, there are extreme labour shortages in Australia and migration is the key to success for the economy. Um, you know, we, myself personally, in my job, I work with a number of different individuals and businesses, people from a variety of different backgrounds, um, different cultures, different languages. So it is something I think when you finish up your university studies and even while you're at university, you will meet people from a variety of different backgrounds, um, people whose viewpoints will severely different to yours. Um, so it's it is really important to, to understand where different people come from um, and how to work with different people um, in your day-to-day -day lives, you know, in, in your, your normal jobs outside of uni, when you, when you step into a career, all of that really helps. And I think your time at university, regardless of which specific discipline or degree you study, will help with that. And those skills will transfer over to, to whatever you end up doing. Um, but it is really important at the same time to pursue something that you are extremely passionate about. Um, I myself, I do not unfortunately use my Spanish on a day-to-day -day basis in my workplace, 
but I do use it socially all the time. Um, you know, I, I got to travel as part of my degree and do a semester abroad in Spain. Um, I was in Granada for six weeks doing an intensive language program, and it was incredible. The, the skills that I learned there and was able to to gain um, an experience I will never forget. And I was able to then comfortably travel through Spain, Mexico, Cuba on my own, um, which was, it was just brilliant. So I think it, it really is a time that you should cherish and make the most of your experience at Flinders. Um, for those who are either enrolling into a language degree, yay. Um, and for those who haven't thought about it, it is definitely something, even if you're not looking at a language specifically, just some of the culture topics you can do are absolutely brilliant. Um, I specialised in Spanish, but I got to learn about Greek mythology. I got to learn into Indonesian music. Um, I spent a semester um, guest hosting on a radio program um, and just, you know, engaging with the community. We got to go into the uh, Latin American Film Festival, like there's so much that is available and the networking that you can do throughout Haas, it's incredibly inclusive and I think the staff are really fantastic for, for opening those opportunities to you, so definitely make the most of it. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you to all our alumni speakers and thank you to Olivia for emceeing that portion. Now, we have been sitting down for a while now, haven't we? <laughs> so we're going to finish up with this session. It's not the end of what's going to happen today, though. So you would have hopefully noticed online you would have signed up for different degree sessions. So I thought I'd pop a reminder of those up here on, on the screen. Um, for those of you online, just make sure you go to the relevant links at the right time. Those in the room, you'll notice we have some sessions that are starting at 11 o'clock, so we'll shortly move off and do that. Those of you doing Bachelor of Arts, you can stand up, do a bit of a stretch and then sit back down again. Um, we do also have some sessions that are going to start at 12 o'clock, so please make note of the room. We also, before you get up and move, I know it's... <laughs> you're busting to go to the next place. Um, we do have activities in the humanities courtyard. So if you don't have a session right now, please join us out in the courtyard. We've got a scavenger hunt. We'll get you into groups. There'll be things to pick up along the way. Yes, and there's prizes as well for doing that. So do the scavenger hunt, we'll meet you out there. And any questions about where you're going, pop out there.